Hello guys, it's Friday, which means video from my office. It used to be from my car, but now it's from my office about dev career and productivity. Not that much about Laravel from technical point of view. And recently I turned 40, which marks 25 years since the first line of code I wrote. And I decided to make 25 years as 25 pieces of advice from those years in my dev career. So situations I encountered over those years and my conclusions as kind of tips for you. I've posted them on Twitter recently and I will link that tweet in the description below. And today in this video, I want to discuss eight of those 25 tips, 25 pieces of advice and comment on them a bit deeper. So let's go. My tip and advice number one, your success equals your skills multiplied by the number of people who know about those skills. I also recently tweeted that in 2024, number one way to get a job is for someone who knows you to offer that job or someone knows someone who knows someone who may offer you the job or someone notices your tweet and then offer you the job. It comes in various ways, but basically your skills, if no one knows about them, your surface of opportunities are pretty much zero. And if you compete for a job position with 50 other candidates and some of those 50 are familiar to employer or someone from the company, then basically you don't stand a chance in most cases. In other words, talk about your skills, don't really advertise yourself or something, but be visible. In whatever form you prefer, just casually mention that you are a developer to someone from your community of non-developers maybe. Participate in meetups, in online events, on Twitter, YouTube, whatever you prefer. But basically, if you're invisible, your skills will have less chance to multiply to opportunities for the future. Advice or tip number two. Regularly talk to developers who use languages or frameworks different than you. That benefit of perspective may help you understand the global things in development, why things work certain way. Also, it may give you fresh ideas how to do something in your language or framework, adopting the idea from somewhere else. My recent example is I tested Symfony for one of the videos and I discovered that Symfony has a command of make crud, which Laravel doesn't have by default. So I have a few ideas of maybe expanding that or doing my own version of that in Laravel. Also, it would give you a sense of empathy to others, to people working with other languages or frameworks. You would maybe understand their opinion, their background, their context, why they think this or that way and you would not spend time arguing about which is better because usually there is no one framework or language that it's the best it usually depends on the context of projects or budget or team and if you know the situation from other developers for example they work in a bigger team than yours or they work with different budget constraints than yours then you maybe will learn something from them and when you land in a bigger company it may affect your decisions in the future. Advice or tip number three is a mistake that I've made multiple times over my career. And this is one of the classical mistakes every developer makes. When someone asks you to estimate how much would that feature take or cost, usually it's manager or maybe potential client for freelancing. Our first reaction on subconscious level is to basically satisfy the question author with some kind of good answer. Because if we estimate that that feature would take like a few hours only, then that person would be happy and proceed with that feature. So most developers tend to answer quickly and answer positively but both are bad in the long run. Then you either is stressed to deliver on time, which you may fail, then you need to overwork or cut on some scope or something like that. And also if you estimate too low, then that person would learn that certain feature takes that amount of time all the time and they would expect to do that in relatively similar time frames. So my advice is when you're asked to estimate, take some time don't answer right away. If you have opportunity, then ask for an hour or even a day to think, then go to whiteboard or paper or whatever, like do some brainstorming, try to evaluate, try to actually estimate. Ask follow-up questions or you will come up with follow-up questions while you're brainstorming. That's what 
usually happened to me. And most of the times your estimate will still be wrong, so multiply by some number. But at least you would take time in your mind to evaluate the problem, think about it and avoid total miscalculations or underestimating or over promising or risk to not deliver at all. And usually the thinking is, especially in freelancing or in agency work, that if you don't win on estimates, then you don't get that work and you lose the client, right? But if you do win that client, but underestimate the time, you actually lose money or time on that client, which may be okay if you do really need that money. But if you have potentially other opportunities to pitch for work, then it's better to skip on that client and potentially win something better for the long term. Next advice and tip number four is stop complaining about too much work in the company. There are always more tasks to do. In good, serious companies, the backlog of work is usually very long and developers never have enough time for anything. There are always cuts, there are always negotiations happening. So managers often fight each other for developers as resources, then developers fight for their right to write tests or do some upgrades or something like that, refactoring technical debt and stuff like that. And I often heard developers complaining and I was complaining myself about why managers, why company owners, why business guys don't give us us enough time to do everything. And at some point in my career, I realized it's just the reality that you need to accept. You need to learn to negotiate, I mentioned it just now, and also from other side, think about it. If your company doesn't have backlog for weeks and months ahead, are you really safe about your job position? So in a way, having a lot of work is a good problem to have. And it's your job to introduce boundaries and again, negotiate. Advice and tip number five kind of related. Your bosses, your marketing team of your company and your sales team will often promise to clients something that they don't even discuss with you beforehand. Especially in bigger companies, in corporate, multiple times, I've encountered the situation that there was some manager meeting or meeting with a client and then after that, the manager comes to me and tells me what to deliver. But they didn't ask the developer whether that is possible at all and possible within the time frame that we have and whether it's not conflicting with other work of the development team. But that is kind of related to the previous point that that is just the reality that you need to accept and you need to negotiate. It's your choice whether to obey to that specific manager. It's especially important if you have a few managers. That happened to me in one of the company because I didn't even know who to report to and who is the priority because I worked on multiple projects. So then you need to negotiate with multiple people at once. And that is also a reality. So that's why in addition to your technical skills, that soft skills of communication and negotiation is hugely important for your career growth. Next advice and tip number six is kind of also related, which is about your teammates or managers as well. Sometimes you may work with people who would not cooperate. So you have a common project, you have a team of five or six people, and for example, one or two people are either lazy or not skilled enough or would not agree with the way that you want to proceed with some feature or functionality, who would maybe disagree with like coding styles, Git processes, what tools do they use and stuff like that, they would still go their own way, doing things their own style. So that happened to me also multiple times in my career. And again, your goal is to still deliver. Again, you would need to negotiate, work around those or with those people and still deliver the result or communicate with the managers about the current situation. I'm not saying you need to talk bad about your colleagues to your managers, no. Usually there are reasons for that. For example, the person may be hired not in their position. For example, backend, they're hired for a full stack development job and they're expected to do front end as well, which they are not comfortable with. Or for example, there are reasons outside of work at all. They may have family issues, health issues, or something that you don't know about. So don't be harsh, 
talk to them, try to help, try to maybe find out the reasons and give them a break. But generally, the managers expect development team to work at 100% energy and capacity all the time. And that is just not true. It's impossible. Someone from the team will always be slower, less motivated maybe, but the projects will still need to get done. Advice and tip number seven is kind of obvious, so I wanted to even skip on that, but so many people do not learn their tools. So to deliver projects, it's not only about learning languages or frameworks like Laravel. It's also about optimizing your processes of work to use the best tools that you can. So learn your IDE, your shortcuts, plugins, AI assistants, external tools like for deployment or CI CD or AWS or whatever, stuff like terminal commands, repeating operations. So you need to have some kind of snippets or something like that. Just constantly improve your workflow in terms of tools. It's kind of that classical tale of sharpening your ax instead of always working on cutting wood. As I said, I thought it was obvious, but so many times I shared some kind of artisan command or tip on Twitter about PHP Storm and people were like, wow, I didn't know that. So that's why it's one of those 25 pieces of advice that I considered important. And finally, my advice and tip number eight, which is number 25 on the Twitter list, and I will link that tweet in the description below. Always be curious. A, B, C. Technologies and frameworks and trends always change. Especially with AI, the changes will be even more rapid. For example, even the core tools from Laravel team. So Laravel Pulse, for example, was created with Livewire. Before that, Telescope used Vue.js. And now the recent Laravel Cloud and Nightwatcher are using React with Inertia. I'm not saying either of those choices are good or bad, but basically trends do change. And if you're not curious about new waves, new trends, new tools, at some point, five years down the road, you will wake up trying to find new jobs, new opportunities, and you will feel obsolete from the current market. And this is one of the ways to survive with your job, even with AI growing stronger. Always be curious and adapt to the market needs of the future. So yeah, eight pieces of advice or tips, still pretty long video. And again, I will link the full list of tips in the description below. Do you agree or disagree? What other things you would add to that list? If you had a long career in development, like 15 years or more, what have you learned? What fundamentals that you would tell your younger self or other ones who are just in the beginning? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.